Hi everyone, welcome back. My name is Morgan. This is my channel Pisces Paperbacks and today is yet another wrap-up video and I'm gonna be ranking every romance that I read in 2020. Romance is my favorite genre so I read 42 romance books in 2020 or novellas or like short whatevers. I'm not gonna be counting rereads so the only romance I reread last year was Running Hot by Jane Ann Krentz. This is a favorite. I've owned it for many years. I've reread it several times and I just love it, but I'm not going to count it because that's not fair. <laughs> I also want to say that as romance is my favorite genre, I tend to like a lot of it. So of these 42, I would say the top 30 I would recommend if you're interested and the bottom 12 are not my favorite, which is still really pretty good uh, percentage of books that I liked and would recommend. But I am almost like harder on romances so there's like fewer five star books in romance than other genres proportionately even though I like more of them if that makes any sense I don't really know but I'm really excited to share all this with you and let's just get right into it also yes I am wearing this Robert Pattinson sweatshirt again I promise I do like change my clothes I just wear this sweatshirt all the time because I love it so much so don't judge me so let's get started and see if I can make this video not six million hours long. Number 42 and my least favorite romance of the year, Dark Prince by Christine Feehan. Number 41, Sweet Vengeance by Kat Martin. Number 40, Credence by Penelope Douglas. This is one where I think if you're interested you should still check it out because this is more of a personal preference than me thinking it's objectively not good. Number 39, For the Love of Scott by Jen Fitzgerald. This was horribly written. There were so many grammar and spelling mistakes it was almost impossible to get through and I didn't like it. Number 38, Trouble by Lexi Tim. I thought this was boring. Number 37, Give Me Love by Paige P. Horn. Number 36, The Lady in the Mirror by Judith Arnold. Just extremely dated. Number 35, The Chalet by Tara Sumi. This one is actually a novella that takes place like mid-series. It's a spin-off book from a series that I didn't read, so that probably docked it <laughs> quite a bit. Number 34, His Virgin Queen by Mink. This one is actually like not bad in concept and had some good parts, but it get it got pretty repetitive and there's only so many times that the hero can call his new wife his queen without it being cringingly like eye rolly. Number 34, The Play by J.H. Croy. Number 32, A Pinch of Sugar by Jessica Kane. This is a smutty short story that is kind of like inspired by it's not he's not literally Paul Hollywood like his name isn't Paul Hollywood but he's kind of like in a daddy kink Paul Hollywood smutty short story so that's that's that <laughs> number 31 and 30 are Crystal Gardens by Amanda Quick and Garden of Lies by Amanda Quick I put them here in this order because I rated one of them two stars the 31 and I rated one of them three stars but I honestly cannot remember what either of these two books are about and they were so similar it's like they could they're interchangeable all right so everything up from here I enjoyed in some way and gave at least three stars so I would recommend to those who are interested number 29 is her lady to love by Jane Walsh this is unfortunately the only like sapphic romance and it was my first sapphic historical fiction and I found some aspects of it to be really annoying but overall it was still enjoyable and I definitely want to read more like female female romances so that's a goal for this year number 28 wrapped by Rebecca Weatherspoon number 27 a duke is never enough by Darcy Burke Number 26 is There's Ever After by Katie Robert. This is actually the third in a romance like novella trilogy and the third was my least favorite because I found it like emotionally unsatisfying in some ways but I really really loved the first two. This is at least the first one is a quick like 40 pages about a girl who goes out to a club and has a run-in with these two men and decides that she wants to have a crazy birthday night and go home with them to have a little menage situation and then it kind of turns into a polyamorous romance over the next two books and so good but this third one was just my least favorite 25 is Tempest by Beverly Jenkins. Number 24 is Lover Enshrined. This is the sixth book in the Black Dagger Brotherhood series and just it happened to be my least favorite so far. Number 23 is Rebel by Beverly Jenkins. Number 22 is All Night Long by Jane Ann Krentz. Number 21 is Affair by Amanda Quick. 
20 is Vivid by Beverly Jenkins. Definitely my favorite Beverly Jenkins that I read this year and I'm going to continue reading her books because I feel like I'm gonna find one that is perfect for me and I just haven't found it yet. So I'm still looking. Number 19 is The Ruin of Evangeline Jones and for most of this book I think it was like a pretty standard historical romance but I really really liked the way it ended. I thought it was a really cool subversion of a lot of common fan um, not fantasy tropes romance tropes especially historical romance tropes so I like that one. 18 is Surrender to the Highlander by Lindsay Sands. 17 is A Duke by Default by Alyssa Cole. This is the second book in the Reluctant Royals series. You will see the first book later on in this list. Shockingly, because it definitely wasn't on my favorite books of the year. Number 16 is Love Bites. This is, I believe, the second book in the Arjuneau Paranormal Romance series that Lindsay Sands has. Not my favorite in the series. I liked the I think I read the first and the fifth one when I was originally reading the series and then I went back to read it in order and I think I liked the fifth one the best but this one is in second place for sure. 15 is Lover Revealed by J.R. Ward. This is the fourth Black Dagger Brotherhood book. 14 is Mating the Huntress by Talia Hibbert. This is only so down on the list because there were so many things above it that I just like loved so much this year but I can't wait to read more Talia Hibbert this year like she's definitely an author I'm interested in reading more from because this book was like really cute it's kind of like a Halloween romance novella about a werewolf and a werewolf hunter peak so good 13 is Haven by Rebecca Weatherspoon this is the first book in the beards and bondage series 12 is ruthless King by Megan March and I actually don't remember the name of this series but it's the first book in a romance trilogy about a mob boss and a woman who like owes him a debt I loved this series so much in, I read it in January and I still think about it 11 is there's for the night by Katie Robert and this is the first book in that polyamorous thruple series that I was talking about. So this is like the really like quick short story almost and then the second and third books are both like full novellas or short novels. We are now entering my top 10 of the year. So exciting. Number 10 is Sanctuary by Rebecca Weatherspoon. This is the second book in the Beards and Bondage series and I love the hero so much. I loved the relationship between these two. It was just like so honest and upfront. I didn't love the sex scenes as much in some ways, but I still thought they were really good. Nine is Defiant Queen by Megan March. This is the second book in that Mob Boss trilogy I was talking about uh, that starts with Ruthless King. I just love this. Eight is Forever Theirs by Katie Robert, and this is the second book in that Polyamorous Thruple series. So I think it's called the Thelanian Dynasty is the series name. Yeah, I think so. Seven is Lover Unbound by J.R. Ward, and this is the fifth book in the Black Dagger Brotherhood series. I think this is the one about Vicious, pretty sure. Six is Rafe by Rebecca Weatherspoon. Oh my god, this is like the buff male nanny one where Rafe is like a male nanny who starts working for a black female doctor who has twins and their relationship. It's impeccable it's so good Rebecca Weatherspoon is pro is one of my favorite authors of the year she's one that I really wanted to talk about in my favorite authors video but as you know I scrapped that video so just saying it now I read four Rebecca Weatherspoon books this year and I really liked all of them so new favorite author for sure five is Sinful Empire by Megan Marsh this is the final book in the mob boss trilogy that I was talking about Four is Radiance by Grace Draven. This is an arranged marriage fantasy romance about a husband and wife from different races and they start off as like friends. It's like, it's kind of like a sham marriage, not really, but they're like going into it and they're like, we're not gonna sleep together. We're just gonna be like chill and hang out and then they fall in love. So good, so good. Number three is Temptation and Surrender by Stephanie Lawrence. This is a historical romance about a girl named Emily who comes to this town with her siblings to search for an ancient family treasure and falls in love with the son of the family who like has like the large estate in the area and their family owns the in where Emily gets a job as like a cover. And it's so good. It's so good. Elsa, stop it. Number two is A Princess in Theory by Alyssa Cole. This is an incredible contemporary novel. It is the first book in the Reluctant Royals series and it follows a medical student in 
New York City and she is basically getting these scam emails that she's the betrothed of an African prince and then it turns out she actually is dun 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 but like so good oh my god and then number one what a shocker the sum of all kisses by Julia Quinn this is it's like a little convoluted to explain but it's basically about Sarah and Hugh and in the past Hugh got into a duel with Sarah's cousin and then as a result of the duel Sarah's cousin had to like flee the country and now Hugh has to use a cane and it's like five years later he, the cousin's back in the country and he's getting married and he invites Hugh to the wedding and then is like Sarah cousin friend can you keep my friend company and like show him around during my wedding and the next weekend during our other cousin's wedding because he needs a buddy and Sarah's like I hate this guy because he sent you out of the country and it was just a mess and I hate him and then if they fall in love and like I said convoluted but their chemistry their chemistry is so good and I it's so funny this book is so funny and I said it in my favorite books of the year video that this book has like major period piece rom-com movie potential like I could picture it and it was so funny it was like kind of meta I just loved it I wish there was more sex scenes because there's only like one and a half and I wish that the final conflict at the end was not the stupidest truly stupidest thing ever um but I I just loved it and I'm probably gonna reread it soon because I want to. And that's all the romances I've read this year. I hope you got some recommendations if you're interested. And if not, I hope you came to understand the landscape of my romance reading a bit better. It was a little historical heavy, but it always is. But there's actually more contemporaries on this list than I think I've ever read in a year before. Like having access to a Kindle and like getting like quick little novellas from the library has like really changed how I read romance in a lot of ways so I am just going to end it here I hope you enjoyed let me know what the fam your favorite romance that you read this year was because I want to know so that I can read it and I will see you guys next time bye